Hey guys, Cypher here. I am going to be talking about AWS Lambdas today. Uh, a few benefits of Lambda functions are you don't have to worry about provisioning hardware so that you can just focus on coding, which is a lot more fun than hardware, let's all be honest. Uh, it has a lot of different use cases from quick and dirty Python scripts to building a full-fledged chatbot. And my favorite benefit is you can be up and running with a Lambda function within minutes, and they're just they're just fun to play with. Um, so, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So, uh, if we're starting at our AWS Management Console, uh, we're going to find the Lambda service. We're going to go ahead and create a new function. We're going to author this from scratch to start with a very basic Hello World example. I'm going to name my project uh, Cypher Hello World. And for the runtime environments, let's all be real, Python or nothing. Just kidding, guys. Java's OK, too. We are going to create a new execution role. So within AWS, if you are not familiar, there's something called IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management. Um, this has to do with users, groups, roles, pretty much all about permissions within your AWS instance. Uh, so right here, we're just creating a new role to give our Lambda function permission to execute. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And it normally takes about 20 to 40 seconds um, to provision this Lambda, which is pretty quick when you're comparing to all the configuration that you have to do with building an actual server. So when we first dive into this screen, we can see it has a nice little designer view. Uh, it shows kind of like a map uh, with our Lambda function in the middle, and then a, f a spot where we can add a trigger, um, a destination, and then we have the permissions of our Lambda and monitoring. If we scroll down, we can see this nice built-in IDE that we have in the browser, uh, which I think is great because then we don't have to switch back and forth between like our a local IDE and copy the code over. Even though when you work on a bigger project, you'll most likely be doing something like that, but. Uh, you could actually work in here until the file gets over a megabyte, and then that's when you have to code locally and upload your code. And then if we scroll down, we can see some basic settings. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice about our function uh, is that it has something called a Lambda handler. Uh, so this is what we can call like a main method for Lambda. Uh, when the Lambda is invoked, this is the first um, function that is executed. Uh, and it's like this because if we go down into the basic settings, we see that there's something called a handler. Uh, so in this handler, it specifies which function will run first, or what, which function will run. Uh, so we have the name of our file and then the main function, which is Lambda handler. So we're going to go ahead and run this code. So test just one, two, three. You can see here that there's a basic uh, just like dictionary. So you could actually use this to pass in some of these values into your program if you wanted to. Uh, we're not going to be doing that today. So let's test it out. And we could see it succeeded, and we just got a basic hello from Lambda response. So if we wanted to change the name of our Lambda handler, we could. We just have to make sure that we update it in the correct spot. Let's see what happens when we change it and we don't. So we could see we get this error message, handler Lambda handler missing on module. So that is because we updated our our function name here, but when the lambda gets invoked, it's looking for this function name. So it's a pretty simple fix. We just update that there, <coughs> save it, 
And let's test it again. And there we go. Yeah, so this is like a very basic um, example. So I want to go over with you guys something a little bit more uh, practical, something that I think you'll be able to get some use out of. I, I have for, for my job. Uh, it's something that I've used. Um, so we're going to import this library called Bodo3. And it's actually a AWS software development kit. Uh, it makes it pretty easy to interact with other AWS services such as IAM, for example. That's what we're going to be using it for today. Um, so we are going to start by creating a new function. We'll call it IAM action. And we are going to be telling, we're going to be connecting to the IAM resource. So we're just going to specify here the resource name, which is pretty intuitive, just IAM. And then we're going to be working with a group in IAM. So we want to connect to IAM and then um, do a get on the admins group. And then we want a list of all the users within this group. And let's see. So uh, if we leave it like this, we won't actually get a clean list of users. We're going to get like a collection. So let me show you guys what it looks like here. Yeah, so here you can say it says uh, IAM.GroupUsers collection. So we want to make sure we're getting the actual uh, usernames and not the collection. So we're going to do that by uh, creating a list and iterating through this, this group. Uh, we're going to do a list comprehension actually because it's something I just recently learned and I've been trying to use it more. So we're saying for i in group, pull out i dot name and store it in this names list. And then we want to return the list of names here. And then since this is our, since we defined down here in the handler, start program. So this is actually what's going to run first kind of we can consider it like our main method. So we're going to return the function here. So let's save and let's test this out. All right, so we got an error. It says an error occurred access denied when calling the get group operation user role blah 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 is not authorized to perform get group on resource group admins okay so pretty much what's happening here is like we talked about earlier in permissions we created a role for our lambda function but this role right now doesn't have access to IAM so we're gonna have to attach a policy to this role so that our our Lambda can talk with IAM. So we have IAM full access here. We're going to attach a policy. And there we go. So now let's go back to our function. And we will try to execute it again. Oh, and there we have it. So we got a list of the user names that are in the admins group. And just to kind of, you know, validate and show you guys where this is coming from, if we go back to IAM and groups, here's our admins group, and we can see the list of users here. So if we, uh, if we delete a user from this group, we deleted Mr. Tom Hardy, we'll run this again. And now we're not seeing him from the list. So uh, something else that you can do 
with a lambda function is of course you're not always going to be there in front of the computer clicking test 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 to, to run your function so we need a way to to automate that uh, we can do this with uh, something called cloudwatch events so it's another service in aws so what we're going to do is add a trigger uh, to trigger our function select a trigger we're going to do cloudwatch events and create a new rule. Our new rule will be called uh, we'll call it trigger cipher. And we'll do schedule expression. Let's see. And we want to trigger it at the rate of one minute. So every minute we're going to call this function. All right, it does not like our schedule expression. There we go, that worked. Yeah, so and it gives us a nice little diagram here so we could kind of see what's going on. Um, so we have this CloudWatch events here and we can see schedule expression rate of one minute. So every minute um, it's going to invoke this this lambda function and uh, a good way to see when it's running as well is that we can go into monitoring and uh, lambdas actually integrate pretty seamlessly with CloudWatch metrics and CloudWatch logs which is very nice because we don't have to do a lot of extra um, to get the metrics in there so we could keep track of it so we could see here how many times it was invoked how long it lasted for, and what kind of errors we got. And then if we go over to CloudWatch logs, we can see the history here of what was being ran. And our logging. So we can see we got that error a few minutes back on the get group operation. So we see that in the logs. Um, and if we want to do more like verbose logging, it's so easy to so easy to integrate. So all we have to do is actually a print function and it'll actually add it to the CloudWatch logs, which is very nice. Uh, so for example, we can do connecting to IAM. We'll do retrieved list of users. And then down here, We'll do lambda started. So we'll save this and test it out. Or actually, this will trigger it either way. So now, if we want to see the logs from this, we won't. We don't need to look here. We'll go to monitoring, and here's the most recent one that was just triggered. Let's see, we're going to go to our log groups, click our, the naming is um, very intuitive as well, AWS Lambda and then the name of our function. So we'll click on one of our log streams, the most recent one. There we go. So just like we printed in our code, our logging gets imported into CloudWatch logs, connecting to IAM, retrieve list of user. Oh, you can see while we're here, the uh, CloudWatch events triggered our Lambda function. So we could see the logs for that. And this actually refreshes our screen every three seconds. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys uh, are able to jump in and create a Lambda function, have fun playing with this. Uh, let me know any future videos on topics that I can cover and I'd be happy to. Um, yeah, have a good one guys.